Okay, well, we are at the hour. I'm going to start with announcements as we let people continue to arrive. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining uh, today's presentation from the City of San Diego Stormwater Department on the Stormwater Program and some of the responses to the flooding events that happened in January of this year. Um, we're very excited for the presentation. Uh, but first, I did want to make a couple brief announcements. Um, last week, we had attempted to schedule a tour of the Southwestern College Aquatic Center that unfortunately um, had to be postponed, but we do have a new date. The new date for that tour will be the 17th of July. So that will be happening at the noon hour down in Chula Vista. Um, very cool program, uh, very cool project done by Gensler. Um, an opportunity to see how they have um, utilized inclusive design strategies and universal design strategies in the development of that project and connecting it to the overall campus, um, as well as how the surrounding community is invited to use the aquatic center. So it's not simply a campus resource, but a resource for the general public. So again, that will be uh, Wednesday, July 17th um, at 12 o'clock. Uh, look for... Um, updated advertisements on that. Um, and if you did register previously, you should receive a email uh, letting you know that it has been updated and inviting you to register for the new date and time. Um, so that is announcement number one. Um, announcement number two is that for our July meeting, we are looking to have a conversation with uh, Eden Bruckman, who is the Chief Sustainability Officer for the County of San Diego. Um, on some of the environmental justice initiatives that are happening in the county and the region and how those are going to be uh, impacting uh, planning and development projects going forward, as well as opportunities for the professional community to be engaged with those um, environmental justice initiatives. So uh, that's what we're looking at ahead for the next month. Uh, Melanie, any other announcements? No, I think you got it all. Okay, great. Um, with that, I will hand over the mic to Vicki Estrada, do okay. some introductions, and then we can uh, welcome our esteemed guests. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, if you know, on January 22nd, that was a fairly unusual day, particularly in Southeast San Diego in the Chores Creek watershed. There was a very, very unusual um, a uh, storm event that jumped uh, an amazing amount of water in a small area. And obviously you all saw the news and read about it uh, in the South Crest area in particular, a lot of houses were flooded and it caused uh, uh, some concern. So I'm also, I think if, what a year ago, so I gave a presentation on green infrastructure to this group and the city of San Diego stormwater department, I've been talking to some of their staff as well they're starting to look at green infrastructure as a, a valuable part of what they want to do. So I thought it'd be great to have um, two key stormwater people come and talk to us about, okay, guys, what is it, you know, that you are doing? Um, I mean, I don't think we could have prevented the flooding, but we could have minimized the flooding that happened in South Crest by a number of, a number of different techniques we could have used. So uh, kind of wondering, you know, using Choice Creek uh, watershed as a catalyst, you know, you, you, doing things throughout the city. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Sarah and uh, um, um, uh, Summer, who are been working on the stormwater program for quite a while. And, and with that, I'll let them give more detail about themselves. But I'm looking forward to this presentation, because there's certainly, you know, the, the stormwater in the past was kind of thought of as an afterthought, no more. I mean, it's gotta be integrated with the urban form, the urban fabric. So it's critical that what happens on the land be integrated with stormwater. So with that, Sarah and Summer, uh, it's all your show. Sounds good, Vicky. Thank you for the intro and thank you for inviting us. I'm gonna take it, uh, turn it over to Sarah in a minute uh, to go through the slides, but just to um, maybe kick it off and give a little bit high level intro. Um, my name is Summer Hassanen. I am the Deputy Director of the Stormwater Department, uh, Think Blue Infrastructure, uh, and that is really the division that manages and plans our capital improvement projects. Uh, Sarah is a senior civil engineer 
who has been involved in uh, really the planning effort and the design of uh, stormwater CIP products for the past uh, five and a half years. And she has been a critical um, uh, staff member that has been involved in the WIFIA. Um, she'll touch on it a little bit, the Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act loan that really provided uh, an, a good influx of funding for the stormwater CIP program. So she's been involved in this effort from day one. She's been really the critical part uh, or individual that has uh, worked on the, the loan application, the implementation and so on of uh, the WIFIA program. Uh, Vicky, uh, you mentioned in your intro uh, that we're going to um, focus for the most part on the January 22nd event. I just want to clarify so that hopefully the audience does not get disappointed. Uh, we're going to describe our program more at a high level. We're going to, um, the slides that Sarah will go through, it is programmatic. I know the January 22nd uh, event is a very unfortunate event that has been in, in the minds of, of all of us, obviously, since it occurred. But we have been really planning stormwater CIP projects, including green infrastructure from the early uh, 2000s. Uh, our program, uh, the green infrastructure program and the integrated approach for our CIP projects integrated in a way that it does address and incorporate flood resilience, green infrastructure, habitat restoration has been our approach from the early 2000s since we established the stormwater program. Uh, and I hope you find it to be more useful. We do have specific example projects that Sarah will explain, and a lot of them are in the choice watershed, and that would be helpful to just specifically focus on the South Cross community. But then again, the presentation is more encompassing than the, just uh, the January event. So I hope you find it helpful. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Sarah. All right. Okay. Can you hear me, Wolf? Yes, we can. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Summer, for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to skip this introduction. And thanks for inviting us to the meeting. Um, all right. Um, so as Summer mentioned, that we're here to present the City of San Diego Stormwater Program in more like a holistic way and talk about just, you know, how uh, we decide and initiate capital improvement project and implementation of those, which is just, you know, the fundamental of improving the water quality and as well as just protecting the neighborhood from flooding. So during this presentation, I'm going to provide the overview of our department and then the mission and vision and what we do. And then I'll talk about briefly about the stormwater program, the regulatory drivers, um, walk uh, through two important planning documents that the department has, and then talk about the stormwater funding situation and challenges that we're dealing with, and also talk about the Water Infrastructure Finance Innovation Act that recently we were successful to uh, secure. And at the end, I'll provide, um, go over some of the example project that uh, we have and we're working on. All right, so the stormwater department, um, um, two primary function of the department is, as you know, that to improve the water quality of San Diego and also to protect a uh, neighborhood from flooding. And uh, in order for the department to do that, the goal of the department is to protect water uh, by implementing water quality uh, infrastructure and as well as prevent uh, waterways, bays, and creek from pollution, ensure the neighborhood uh, are safe from flooding by improving the uh, storm drain and uh, infrastructures, provide clean and green street, um, enhance our communities by preserving the natural habitat and restoring the habitats, capture stormwater uh, for use and eventually for use as a potable water, and uh, encourage public partnership and prioritize education and outreach. So the vision of the department is to create vibrant, sustainable communities through innovative flood control and water quality management. And the mission is to build and maintain efficient stormwater infrastructure for safe, sustainable, and thriving San Diego. So what we do, the department is responsible for managing uh, stormwater asset, which includes more than a thousand miles of pipe, uh, 12 miles of levy, uh, 15 pump station, um, 69 uh, miles of the channel, 
um, and um, a lot more assets such as drainage and structure, a lot of water quality project that has been implemented, um, and also just a strip sweeping. Um, so as you might be aware, the department has a limited resource and limited budget. However, they manage to um, be active and manage and maintain these assets that a lot of them already passed their useful life and needs replacement, and also um, invest in uh, a uh, high priority side to um, to improve the infrastructure as much as possible. So now let's um, talk about uh, we just talk about what we do and let's now talk about you know some of the uh, stormwater program drivers and regulations. So as I mentioned, we're responsible for managing a stormwater asset, but also the department must comply with very strict flood control and water quality regulation um, as drafted in an MS4 permit. There is a um, jurisdictional runoff management plan that we report to board every year, a water quality improvement plan that set a numeric target with the strategies and timeline that the city needs to comply with. So there's so many um, regulation that the department needs just to comply with. And as you can imagine that, um, the department has different competing priorities with um, very, as I mentioned, limited resource and budget. Therefore, there is a significant need for a planning document, planning tools to um, guide and prioritize operation and capital investments and, and prioritize project implementation, implementation to ensure successful implementation of the comprehensive integrated stormwater uh, program. Therefore, the department has developed one of the robust planning document, which is called Watershed Asset Management Plan, the, or we call it WAMP, and it's available online to be looked at. WAMP is a planning tool for stormwater department that determines a program, project, and level of investment needed to manage asset within the given watershed. It essentially has a different tool. It has a financial tool that helps the department to identify the needs of the department in the next 20 years or so, uh, based on both the resource that the department needs and the capital investment that the department needs based on all these regulations and based on the condition of the asset. And also it has a, we, there's a, um, there's also a CIP planning tool that the department use to prioritize and to plan the CIP project. So um, essentially, basically WAMP serves to streamline planning and prioritization and optimizing the both capital and operation investment for the maximum benefit. Um, so a little bit of uh, more dive into the WAMP. Um, so WAMP, prioritize asset based on the BRE score, which is a stand for business risk exposure. Um, that is based on the probability of failure of the asset. That is based on the condition of the asset, capacity of the asset, the life cycle of the asset, and also based on the consequence failure, um, consequent failure of the asset that consider that if the asset fails, what's the impact to the economy, environmental and social aspect of that. So consider all these factors and rank the asset and the, the um, the goal is just to identify um, a high risk and high priority assets to make sure the um, the department invests on those high priority assets. Um, so WAMP, as I talk about, it looked at the pro it look at the um, the um, it look at our inventory in an asset level. Look at the pipes. Look at levies separately, but it doesn't look at that. Uh, you know, are the pipes are in vicinity, like it does it need to be bundled, you know, with a water quality um, component. So therefore, definitely there's a need uh, for to look at um, in a site specific and pri prioritize sites and define a project. Again, uh, the department has developed another planning document. It is called Integrated Drainage Engineering Analysis or IDEA which is a watershed level study and planning document that look at each watershed separately by collecting the data and information, collecting all the assets within that specific watershed, look at all the water quality regulation in that specific watershed, 
and as, uh, assess those watershed in details to understand which pipes or which storm drain or infrastructure are on their size, where is the high priority location for as far as pollution, um, and then uh, define a project and bundle project together and prioritize those based on the Council Policy 800-14. Uh, which is basically the goal, eventually the goal of the idea uh, is to define projects that reduce flood risk, improve water quality, restore habitat, um, help with the climate change, and um, also looking at the opportunity to capture water and reuse it for um, um, uh, harvesting. Um, so as I mentioned that um, these projects are prioritized based on adopted council policy 800-14, which is based on different weighted factors, as you will see here, based on there's a legal comp uh, compliance aspect, the asset condition, the equal and equitable community investment sustainability, and obviously like the funding availability and how ready the project is, and then the multi-benefit that the project provides. Is it looking at only improving the flood or it's just integrated providing restoration, providing flood uh, improvement, providing water quality? So, so far the department um, was able to uh, complete five uh, different ideas for um, um, uh, three different watersheds. So the first um, integrated drainage analysis that uh, the department completed is a choice watershed, as you will see here. The second was low Penasquito watershed, um, and also the department's planning team and in a, just you know completing um, the San Diego Bay watershed idea and as well as Mission Bay watershed idea. So um, these two water the ideas will be completed by end of this fiscal year, which is just uh, a month from now. All right, um, so we talk uh, about um, a lot about the, um, uh, we talk about just, you know, a lot about the department program and the drivers now. Um, so as I mentioned that the department has a list of priority assets that need maintenance and also a specific location that are prioritized. There's so many um, undersized infrastructure that needs to be upgraded. There are um, so many locations the water quality needs to be implemented to improve the water quality. So there's so many competing priorities that all require capital investment and as well as operational investment and requires budget and resource. So as I mentioned, unfortunately, the stormwater department is severely underfunded and then underfunding of the department has serious consequences. As you can see, this is one of the many examples that we have experienced as we talk um, um, that's caused by the storm drain failure um, under Highway 163 that, as you see, that caused mudslide erosion and um, um, uh, creating a danger for public uh, safety and health. Um, so event like this is just increasing as every year pass as again, the, um, many of our infrastructure pass their useful life and they're very susceptible to failure. So events like this definitely impacting the livability of the San Diego, cause water pollution, um, so it doesn't allow us just to invest more money in the water quality, cause beach closure, losing the opportunity to capture water, um, and at the end might uh, cause fine claims litigation and also just, you know, may uh, result in the Clean Water Act violation. So definitely there is no doubt that there is a big need for uh, long-term funding and dedicated um, source of funding for stormwater. However, uh, before that happened, the department actively looking for any near-term funding and financing option, actively applying for any available loan, uh, such as um, the state revolving loan, um, any grants uh, through the FEMA grants, hazard mitigation grant, actively pursuing all possible source of um, loan and grants and looking at um, different um, cost recovery me mechanisms such as uh, increasing the street sweeping citation, the stormwater inspection fee, um, the stormwater enforcement. Um, however, among all these near-term financing options, the biggest one that the department was successful to secure recently about a year and a half ago uh, is the Water Infrastructure and Innovation Act. With you, I'm sure a lot of you heard about it a lot, that the department was able to secure $733 million in VFIA loan 
to invest um, on around 71 different projects on the, across five different DCI category, um, which are the um, a lot of project on the restoration category, green infrastructure category, um, corrugated metal pipe category that focus on the uh, replacing of the age and um, deteriorated corrugated metal pipes. Um, and also pump station and rehabilitation project that more like a uh, more um, culvert replacement types of the project. So with the VFIA fund, uh, we are able to fully fund the design and construction portion of the uh, around 71 uh, CIP project. So in the next few slides or uh, in the next following slide, I'm going to present an example project under each VFIA category that we were able that were able to fully fund and the design uh, um, majority of them are in design phase or were able to fully fund both design and construction phase. Okay, I start with um, pump station category. So one of the projects that uh, were able and are fully funded through VIA is pump station G and 17. It is located in uh, Mission Beach, Pacific Beach area in Council City uh, 1 and 2 in a Mission Bay watershed. Um, so the um, uh, uh, image here shows, this shows the structure of the pump station that consists of two station, one pump station G belong to stormwater department and one pump station 17 belong to um, public utility department. We're sharing uh, one structure and generator and um, um, up with, with each other with the one electrical system. So you can imagine that, um, you know, it's not an ideal situation and then the um, the station uh, the stormwater station only can cover up to uh, five or five year storm event so it's not just um, uh, not able to cover the hundred year storm event um, so um, and also the, the area that drain to this pump station is around 59 acre that drain and discharge um, um, so if the pump station is not working, the consequence of the failure is basically cause the road closure and it floods around 29 acre of the area, which is just, you know, it, it's a lot. So through VFIA, we're able uh, to fund this project and we funded this project. It is at the design and moving forward. Um, so a little bit, again, background about that, that uh, pump station, it is in a very poor condition, has a poor structural condition, poor ventilation system, and non-functioning pump. One of the pump was, you know, out of uh, function, so we're just working with the, the other pumps. Um, so as I mentioned, the pumping doesn't have enough capacity. We're sharing electrical with PUD and then the generator size is not adequate for the pumping capacity. Um, more picture about the existing condition of the, um, of the station. So we'll see here um, the pipe support corrosion and structural corrosion. Um, again, more picture just you know, showing the closed area. Um, um, again, um, some some structural cracks and and uh, corrosion more. This is the main switchboard. You can see that it's not in a condition, which is just one of our important assets. So therefore, to this project, now we're able to separate these two stations from each other and propose a separate structure uh, for each of the stations. So pump station G, which is our uh, pump station would be on the right side and uh, PUD's pump station would be on the left side with a separate wood well, separate electrical system, uh, upsizing and uh, our uh, pumps to make sure there's more capacity. We have a backup generator. So we're operating the whole structure and system to make sure uh, definitely um, help with that um, during this whole event. Um, all right, so stream restoration and revitalization category under VFIA. Um, one uh, project under this category is Hamasha Drainage Channel um, Upgrade Project. It is located in a skyline Paradise Hill in Council District 4 within the San Diego Bay uh, watershed, uh, which is choice as part, which is choice of watershed. Um, so the project extend uh, from B, starting from Beacon Drive and then uh, travel westerly all the way to the Imperial Avenue going under MTS, which is charging Canto Channel. You, you're able to see the project footprint. 
the goal of the project is to reduce 100 year flood risk. The channel capacity currently, again, in some segments is around two year, which is a very small storm event up to five year storm event. So it doesn't have enough capacity and it costs flooding the neighborhood and resident area along the channel. The goal is just to reduce the risk of flooding, increase the creek capacity, um, and restore the, and the, the stream and uh, propose some habitat area, upland area and land area, provide some recreation amenities uh, like trail along the creek and improving the water quality um, of that. Um, so existing condition, the, the creek is severely eroded as you will see in these pictures, um, has, as I mentioned, caused frequent flooding, flooding neighborhoods and resident area. Um, and there's accumulated debris, trash, and there's no stormwater quality treatment. So this is kind of like showed the condition of the creek um, currently. So uh, the goal of the project is to improve the capacity of the creek by widening the creek, enhancing the creek, propose a biofiltration and divert the runoff from a storm drain to improve the water quality before discharging to the creek, establish uh, wetland mitigation, and also there's um, six culvert crossing the creek, upsizing the creek to make sure that Conway and has enough capacity to convey from upstream of the creek to the downstream. So this is kind of like show, showing the schematic of the uh, creek enhancement and some mitigation area, restoring area that we're proposing. So through the FIA fund, we're fully funding this project both design and construction. Uh, green infrastructure. Um, so I put example, one example, uh, South Mission Beach, a storm drain and green infrastructure. So this project is more than green infrastructure. It has definitely more component. It's just more integrated types of project. But I thought that this is very important, unique project that I would like just to present at this meeting. And as a matter of fact, there was a press conference given this morning um, at the Bonita Cove area. Um, so it was a just, you know, very successful meeting, the project received around $37 million of the SRF loan, and as well as fully funded by BFIA uh, as well. So project is uh, located in the Mission Beach area in uh, uh, Council District 2, um, um, and this is basically the location of the project. Um, so South Mission Beach located with a, um, this project located in a large community of the Mission Beach um, along the, which is uh, situated along the Pacific Ocean between the, go back, between the, um, this is just the Grand Avenue, between the Grand Avenue and Mission Bay Jetty. Um, um, so the community is considered that one of the mostly dense uh, community that makes it very challenging and difficult to install any infrastructure or adequately fit, um, adequately sized infrastructure within this narrow alley and roads. Um, so that's a very complex project and the existing storm drain in the neighborhood and in the area is back to the 1940s and um, they're not adequately sized or undersized and cause flooding the area and neighborhood and resident area anytime that it rains. And also the storm drain outfall is exposed and make it just, you know, dangerous for swimmers and, uh, you know, boaters and, you know, um, any other people just enjoying the beach. Um, so kind of like a, um, the existing condition, as I mentioned, the storm drain infrastructure in the area is very old and um, back in 1940s, obviously past their life cycle, they're not adequately sized. Um, some area there is not even a system um, and cause the frequent flooding and we have exposed uh, outfall and obviously there's no water quality in the area. So this is kind of like walking through the scope of the project. This is just the extent of the project. Um, and the, the scope is to obviously reduce the risk of flooding by improving the storm drain infrastructure by installing the brand new drainage system and upsizing the existing drainage system and realigning and replacing the old one to make sure it convey the flow correctly, deepening the existing outfall to make sure make it just safe 
for swimmers, install a tight gate to doesn't allow the flow, uh, the tidal flow back into the storm drain and inlets. Um, and there's also diversion structure within the area. We're improving those diversion uh, um, uh, structure to capture and optimize them to capture stormwater in the first 30 minutes and divert to the sanitary sewer to be used eventually for the uh, pure water. And um, improve the water quality. We're also improving the ill grass area, restoring the ill grass that you know help with the uh, reserving, preserving our habitat. And uh, that's an example, um, sorry, just if I go back and this kind of like um, green area shows the water quality basin that is proposed as part of this project. As you can see that there's just um, six, seven different water quality basin proposed to improve the water quality before discharging to the marine airspace. Um, and that's kind of like a, a schematic of one of the water quality basin that is planned to be proposed uh, and installed in this uh, landscape area that allows the water to um, uh, through the curb cut to get into these basins and improve the water quality before discharging to the bay. Um, our rehabilitation category of the Wi-Fi. So one of the very important projects that we have is uh, Famous Slu Ali Slope Restoration. It's located in Pensilla uh, co uh, Community Council District 2 in San Diego River watershed. Um, so the project focuses on the alley between the Montalvo and Mento, uh, Mento uh, area. So the alley is located here. Um, so currently, there is no drainage system within the alley. The runoff discharge from this resident area to alley directly and to the top of the slope and continue down toward the pedestrian trail and um, then find its way um, toward the low point of the slough, um, cause a heavily, uh, cause this slope to be heavily eroded, as you will see in this picture. So the department, um, um, Every winter and every time that's a storm season, they put you know, um, construction BMP to make sure just avoid any more erosion. The slope is heavily eroded. So um, this, the goal of the project is to stabilize the eroding slope between Menton Street and Montauvo Street, um, reduce sediment and trash that deliver to the slope through, without having a drainage system and improve and safeguard the water quality and habitat, obviously, because eventually the, the water discharge to the um, to the slope. Um, so the scope of project, this is kind of like an inside for engineering drawing, but uh, proposing a brand new drainage system. There is no system. This is the end of the alley that um, propose a new system to collect the runoff from the alley and then safely convey that to a piping system all the way to the end of the slough. Um, so it um, avoid uh, more erosion and also to, um, to do the uh, restoring this, this, the, this slope and more make sure that we're uh, stabilizing this slope. Um, and I believe this is the last category, corrugated metal pipe. So we all know that um, the corrugated metal pipe life cycle is around 35 years or 40. And majority of our corrugated metal pipe were installed back in 1940s, 50s. So they all definitely passed their life cycle. It's our one of the high priority assets for our department that requires just you know immediate attention and they need just to be replaced and sized correctly with their reinforced concrete pipe. So we have number of the project under this category. I'm just going uh, over one example project, which is Hamasha Lumita Storm Drain Project. It is located in San Diego Paradise Hill, Council District 4, in San Diego Bay Watershed, which is also in a choice of watershed. So the, the scope is fairly simple. Um, there's ex existing corrugated metal pipe um, along the Lincoln Place, uh, along the Bertian and Hamasha Road. And the scope is to install, um, to abandon the existing corrugated metal pipe, as you will see that that's shown by the blue color. And uh, some of them were rerouting to the right away with a brand new uh, reinforced concrete pipe. Um, this pipe went under the property and obviously just, you know, not safe. So we're abandoning a 
uh, reroute um, to the right of way and also proposing a brand new pipe to convey the flow to the um, to the um, correct inlet. So that's the scope is just to replace it um, uh, to um, abandon the CMP is replaced with RCP and as well as just propose a new drainage system to make sure that it uh, capable of conveying the 100 year uh, flow. With that, that's gonna. I'm gonna conclude my presentation and open to questions. So here's what I'd like to do: rather than uh, just have questions willy nilly, I'd like those of you with questions to raise your hand, uh, and I will look at the participants and I will call on people. You can stop sharing now, um, Sarah. Okay, thank you. We can always go back if we have to. Um, let me start with some uh, a question. I have a whole bunch of questions, but hopefully people will. The hands will start going up. Come on, guys, you can think of questions here. Um, so you haven't stopped. I want to see your face, Sarah. Um, my camera is on, isn't it? Well, yes, your camera's on. It's visible. Yeah, you go to the bottom. So if you have two screens, it's probably on another screen where it says stop sharing, a little red square at the top of the screen. Yeah, I think I stopped sharing. Am I still sharing? It's okay. I, I can there stop you. You're all set. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. Perfecto. So, one of the questions that comes up is the question of silos in terms of working with other city departments, for example, park and rec or street, you know, the street division. Uh, an example would be, you know, adding more trees would go a long way in terms of um, minimizing the amount of water that goes into the street. I read a study one time. They had two five-acre plots right next to each other. And one had no trees, and the other one, um, I mean, they were denuded, and the other one kept the existing trees. And the lot with the trees actually absorbed something like 70% more water, even more than that. And uh, it's not just a canopy, it was the roots as well. So one of the things, um, going back to the January 2nd flooding, if, if we would have had more trees, more urban canopy upstream, I think it would have um, eliminated, not eliminated, minimized the amount of water that wouldn't, would have gone through. Uh, on your Hammershaw project on the revegetation, it terminates uh, at Imperial there at the park. And so the question is, you know, in terms of eliminating silos, are you working closely with other departments like Park and Rec uh, in that particular case? So I'll, st I'll start with that question and see how many other questions come up. So. Could you respond to that question, Sarah, and Summer? Yeah, definitely. I can take a stab at it. I'm going to hand it over. So I'm, I'm going to respond about the hammer shop, but I think Summer can respond more in general. Mm -hmm. um, for hammer shop, definitely we are in a very close coordination with Park and Rack. And as a matter of fact, actually, we have um, like bi-weekly standing meeting that talking to them regarding any improvement we're proposing from the channel perspective. And we're working together that they are going through imagining the park. The park is not located in the best place. It is in a flood prone area. Um, so they believe that they need to change, relocate that to some, not completely somewhere, but just, you know, relocate it within the uh, Mori Wideman Park. Um, so we're just doing a lot of, you know, coordination to make sure that we receive their inputs. There's a lot of um, planning documents. There's a a uh, mass choice master plan that the planning um, department has developed park and rack it were involved. There's a, a master bike path, there's master trail uh, planning document. We're all just, you know, using and reviewing to make sure that you know, anything that's applied to our project, so integrated. So we're not going silo. Okay, so on that project, you mentioned trails. So as part of your project, are you able to construct a, a trail when you when you rehab that uh, that that corridor can that become part of the project then at the same time the, the, the trail it is uh, currently part of our project okay. along between the beacon uh, drive and all the way to the emory whiteman part before just for hit the imperial avenue so we're we'll the trail yes perfect thank you leslie uh lincoln park vice chair you're muted you're muted still Leslie, Leslie, unmute, unmute. There you go. Yes, hello. Um, I noticed that it's Canto, um, an imperial from 61 to 69 needs a lot of work. However, you've excluded the damage done if you go from Encanto 
you go through uh, Emerald Hills, Joyous View, and Lincoln Park that have had massive damage in erosion and homes ruined, vehicles ruined, um, and you aren't doing any kind of project there. I'm surprised. Um, and I would recommend that you do. I, I share the photos with you I've taken of the areas and all the female here and the people who've had to rescue people here. Um, and the other thing is you are concerned about money about these projects. I think a lot of the problem has been with the planning department and the transportation department here and uh, who didn't really keep up with things. They didn't really uh, keep a handle on the people who were building here, who have built buildings and did not put in the uh, storm drains that legal was to put in. You might consider finding them going back and doing that. Then we have hills that just eroded because no one did any terracing when they built things. We had, we had tremendous mud. Um, people removed big trees. Uh, they planted uh, small little native plants that did not suck up the water. I think this is something that needs to be looked at. Um, also things like um, Vicky's here and she could see from her office, put terracing behind the hills where the, the mud fell through. Um, they didn't, uh, they cemented things, they cemented channels, uh, which just again added to the mess here, because basically the water had nowhere to go and it just picked up tremendous speed and tremendous mud. Okay, Leslie, uh, I, I think we got, I think they got the point. So um, do Summer and Sarah, any uh, response to her concerns and her questions? Yeah, so I think, um, Obviously, it's a very loaded question or comment uh, more from Leslie. Um, I, I hear you and we do understand obviously the impact from the January 22nd storm related to that particular segment in terms of uh, stormwater infrastructure improvements. Um, we'll have to take a look. We'll go back to the master plan or the integrated engineering study that Sarah mentioned that we developed in Choyas to see if any improvements were proposed uh, for that particular segment in the watershed. And, and well, let's, I would let's, like to know that, but I'd like yeah, contact yeah. information. With yeah. So well, if you send it yeah. to me, I'd be happy to send you what I have. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll definitely look into it and maybe get the question or the response back through uh, Vicky. Uh, however, just to also clarify, the projects that Sarah presented today, this does not represent the entire list of projects that we have. This is only a sample of a few projects that we have going. As Sarah mentioned, we have more than 70 projects that are going in different phases of planning and design, and some are in construction already. So there are other efforts, and there are some projects that are still in early phases of design and planning. So you know, I, you'll, you'll start seeing more things going into construction and see more uh, uh, project, more outcome really from these projects, especially as funding becomes available. You know, we already have some initial- well, We have been in, in the suburban areas and what I found even even worse is most of the people's homes is here and most losses are here, Anto. You know, I'm sorry that they had the, you know, the major structure losses, but they didn't have individual traumatic losses of their, their whole homes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Leslie. I think, I think we understand that. So. And uh, the unique thing is if um, we had a trouble with the mayor, when they went to inspect this area, they got it wrong. They went to South 47th street and they, the Creek doesn't run. If you went to the right place, which is between market and Imperial, the creek and you look at one side you see all the damage and the if you look at the other side where the landlords had paint had planted non-native plants that had deep roots they didn't have the damage we had so please take a look okay. they, i think they will do that so thank you for your questions if you want further clarification uh, unless you can always email me and uh and i can uh, pass on that message to summer and sarah uh, jonathan you have a question Yes, thank you. Um, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Summer. Um, do appreciate you guys coming and sharing this information with us. Um, I did want to ask a little bit, maybe to dive into more 
some of the restoration projects and things that you guys have upcoming. Um, and the question that I wanted to ask was, what is the city's process for evaluating pros cons when considering sort of green or resilient mediation strategies and solutions versus conventionally engineered piped solutions? And um, what are some of your preferred strategies for those uh, more resilient mediation or you know mediation and improvements? Um, and, and where are you hoping to implement them as you go forward? Good question. Thanks, Jonathan. I think that yes, staff and then Summer, please add to that. Um, I think that the integrated drainage engine analysis that we have developed, that's exactly what we need and what we're just, you know, looking at. In, and as you can, you can tell from the name, it's integrated planning document. So we don't look at it so low that, okay, this is a specific location, it's need to upsize only the storm drain. Um, and this location is the water quality. So we're trying just to look at it holistically from all aspects. Um, so the goal is just to improve the flood, improve the water quality, and restore the habitat, and even even possibility to capture. So a lot of time we have a detention wall that allows for sediment uh, deposition to improve the water quality, then we divert as well. So we're definitely looking at all these opportunities through the idea that we develop. It's a watershed development study. So any project that are defined in that planning tool, it's an integrated project. It, it does, it's not a silo project. However, a lot of time, you know, we have a corrugated metal pipe require immediate attention. It passed the life cycle, it's susceptible to failure. So I'm not saying that we're not initiating any project, you know, only focusing on, you know, flood aspect, but definitely our approach is just more like invest on the uh, integrated project. And as far as even the council policy 800-14 that I showed this slide, one of the factor is just the multi-benefit of the project. So if the project has more than one benefit, it is scored higher and make it just to the topper, topper rank compared to the others. I think what Jonathan's saying as well, if I can add to your question, Jonathan, is that it would be great that th your first approach, your first priority when you have a problem is looking at it from a green infrastructure standpoint, you know, a natural solution, as opposed to traditionally engineers will always look at pipes and so forth, but maybe the priority of green infrastructure, more natural solutions to become little by little, a little bit higher in the process. That's all I think Jonathan's. It, it, yeah, and can, can I just add a little bit to the answer? So the next step after what Sarah explained, when we start the design of that specific project, we go through hours and hours of workshops with everybody involved. So if there are, for example, park and rec assets, you know, if there's a park or open space or let's say planning department, then we go through uh, alternative analysis. That's when we start evaluating the pros and cons for the different alternatives. I can give you just one example, that Beta Street drainage, for example, that South Crest area, uh, we evaluated 14 different alternatives. And then we go through a very complex matrix of putting in factors that we consider and pros and cons. And we literally give them weighted scores. I got and that. A big factor is what you mentioned, the green infrastructure. Are these sustainable solutions? Are they resilient? to even climate change? Uh, what are the pros and cons from even providing multi-benefit to the community, open space, green infrastructure, and so on? So there is a very complex process up front. Then we start eliminating uh, alternatives, and then we uh, come to the top two or three uh, alternatives, and then we start really looking at it in more details till we decide on the final. Right. Thank, yeah. thank you. Yeah. If, if I may. Thoughtful, if a I'm... very thoughtful process that goes through. Go ahead. Sure, yeah, if I may, I, I think the, the other follow-up that I was hoping to hear is, are there, um, I know it's going to be a case by case basis, but is there at a very high level, a set of um, preferred natural or green infrastructure strategies that the department is trying to implement on a broader level in, in you know, across the region in multiple locations? And does that start with sort of rainwater detention and capture, or is it more about habitat restoration and sort of making more permeable surfaces along a watershed length. What um, are there any broader visions for how to try to address those I, I would say solutions? It, yeah, yeah, and I would say it is a combination. So part of the mass, the watershed master planning level, like Sarah said, 
the goals, like when we start with these master plans, the goals are, I mean, it's part of our vision, right? You know, to provide water quality and more sustainable solutions. So we look at these really upfront. So for example, the channel restoration that Sarah mentioned in a few examples, that's one of the very first solutions we uh, explore to remove and reduce concrete in these channels and expand uh, the width of the channel to make it more natural, rest, restore it and, and provide for that better uh, rehabilitation and you know mitigation alternatives. So that's definitely one of the very first solutions that we look at usually. Okay, thanks, Emma. I, I, a quick little follow-up uh, question on the chat, then I'll go over to Phil uh, Bona. <coughs> um, you talked about the evaluation process and you look at all the, you know, the pros and cons. Is that strictly done in stormwater department? Do you involve the community at all? Does parks get involved? Is it just strictly, can you talk a little bit more about that? Can the community be involved in your decision process? Absolutely, absolutely. So the, to start with, we start internally here in the city, like the design team, like Sarah, she's the PM with the consultant, right? Because you, you gotta start with the initial research. Then we involve other departments like park and rec, planning department, uh, public utilities department, if there are uh, sewer lines at the bottom of the channel, uh, and so on. Okay. And then the next step, once we come to the best three alternatives, that's when we will start going out to the community in uh, in public workshops. And that's what we discussed with you and Leslie Reynolds when we yeah. had yeah. when you invited us to the climate collaborative uh, effort. Yeah. Thank so you. that's Thank the next step, especially that, with uh, projects like this that are large scale. Great. Thank you, Summer. Good, good answer. Phil Bona. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to just kind of regurgitate from a, a long time ago. As far back as 2007, there was a gentleman by the name of Dan Hendrickson, and uh, he caught my ear while I was at CCDC, and he represents a company called Powell Water, and Powell Water is a... a, a electrocoagulation uh, technical system that uh, are, is being used in many states in a variety of capacities. And ultimately as water, it's a filtration system uh, essentially that delivers 99.9% .9 pure water, H2O, because it uh, through electrocoagulation eliminates all particulates separates them and turns them into struvite, which is a material that is actually uh, worth money and can be sold in the open marketplace. Um, what we ended up, uh, as we promoted it, it was that uh, we visited all the, the city and county, uh, mostly san sanitary sewer, but also uh, storm sewer folks and, and got the cold shoulder for the most part. Um, and it, it does have a price point, um, but it does deliver high, high end, you know, purification. Uh, and and they'll, they'll even they have systems just for laundromats so that they can take uh, all that water that they use and, and bring it back to, to zero. So in, in the I was a big proponent at CCDC of the purple pipe system and was really interested in how we can take our storm water and sanitary sewer and through technology, make water and make clean water, blue water. And so I just ask you to maybe brush off that old information and check it out one more time. They're in Colorado these days, um, and they're still out there promoting these kinds of, of high-end technology systems, and it's worth a look at. Okay. Any, any response or are you just going to say, yep, we will? I, I'm not familiar with the technology, I'll be honest with you. I, I do not know it. I've never heard of it. You're so. doing yourself a disservice. Okay, we'll, we'll look into it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. So I'm, yeah, I don't Electrocoagulation. Have okay. Oh, okay. Good, good, good to know. Um, any more questions before I ask more of my questions? Um, no, no other questions. I, I thought I saw something in the chat from Jennifer. Uh, Randy Wild. Oh, I know what I was going to ask, and I'll go back to Randy. You're still on the line, I think. Um, you know, a year ago, the stormwater was maybe fourth or fifth on the priority list for the city, but after the flooding on the 22nd, I think um, you're, uh, you know, you raised the urgency level of stormwater. 
uh, to a higher priority. So the question is, and you talked about funding, you know, there clearly no city has enough money to do whatever they want to do. So um, in terms of preventing the kind of flooding that happened on the 22nd, um, does the mayor's office, uh, certainly what is it that you're doing mayor's office to try to uh, make this a higher priority? Randy, are you still on? You are not. I'm here. Yeah. Oh, you are. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, and yes, stormwater is um, a huge priority for us. Uh, as year after, year after year, we get our five-year capital infrastructure outlook and yeah. see that gap uh, that's in the billions. Um, we have very aged, uh, past its useful life stormwater system across the city. Um, we were out this morning uh, with the EPA and State Water Board uh, in South Mission Beach talking about a $37 million investment uh, that the EPA is making. Uh, we've got the $733 million loan through WIFIA uh, from the federal government. So really, we're, we're trying to meet this moment by taking advantage of all of the funding opportunities that have come through the bipartisan infrastructure law and other opportunities through grants. Uh, we've applied for several uh, in the choice area from FEMA um, for hazard mitigation uh, grant uh, dollars. Um, and then I think maybe more importantly than hustling and getting all of those dollars for specific projects is making sure we have a long-term uh, funding availability to actually be able to maintain and continue to replace uh, this aging infrastructure, which is one reason uh, why the mayor has been uh, wholeheartedly um, supportive of the uh, ballot measure that the council is soon going to um, weigh in on or, or decide whether that goes on to the November ballot. Uh, there's a couple of different revenue measures. Uh, the sales tax measure would be a general fund, and then there's a stormwater uh, measure that would be a parcel tax based on uh, square footage of impermeable surfaces. Um, either of those would be a huge boon to the city in terms of ongoing funding for stormwater, um, because the, the status quo is just not working, and I think everyone can understand that. Good. Thank you very much. We got four minutes left. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to turn it back over to you to close the meeting and then uh, announce, I mean, this is being recorded, right? So we'll be able to, to download this later or share it with others who were not able to make the meeting. So Mr. Jonathan French. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, and thank you again to uh, Summer, Sarah, Randy. Uh, we do appreciate you all making time to join the meeting, the discussion today. Um, you know, this is a hugely important issue. And I think what we would like to extend also is, uh, a welcome to reach out back to us um, as we would like to be helpful. I mean, part of this is having a group of professionals who are keen to be engaged with the issues, to be proactive um, and to be uh, very much a part of the solutions that the city is working towards. And, you know, along with the broader region, uh, we have a you know, large and diverse county and region um, with very complex issues. And this is just but one of them. Um, but it has a huge impact on our public realm and all the things that we as design professionals really care about and believe we have expertise to uh, to help with, you know, coming to solutions. So we do very much appreciate you coming today, sharing uh, a bit about the programs that you're working on, about the climate resiliency plan, et cetera, that was dropped in the chat. Thank you, Randy, for putting that in there for everybody. Um, and uh, with that, yeah, we will let people go. I will make one last reminder, uh, look ahead we will have um, a tour again of the Aquatic Center in uh, Southwestern College. Um, that will be on July 17th for those who are uh, interested in joining. Um, that will also be including AIA um, health and wellness and safety learning units for those who need their continuing education credits. Um, and then uh, next month we are reaching out to uh, Eden Brookman, who is the Chief Sustainability Officer for the County of San Diego to continue this discussion on um, really sort of how environmental issues are forefront to the discussion of our public realm and the design and impacts that that has to our communities. So uh, looking forward to our July meeting on um, July 10th, yeah. so more to follow. And, and Jonathan, Sarah and Summer, we will add you to the list every month so you will know uh you will get the announcements so may, there may be something you can uh attend so thank you both very much uh jonathan are we staying on the executive committee afterwards for a minute or no yes please yes 
Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Jonathan and Vicky, for having us. And we look forward to continuing to co collaborate with this group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. Your it was great. That was all great. Thank you, Sarah. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.